The purpose of this video is to discuss the weight object and all of its associated properties. To find the weight object, simply look in your toolbox and scroll down with this little arrow on the right. The weight object looks like a little stopwatch right here. The purpose of the weight object is to pause your experiment without any visual feedback or visual indication that the pause is happening. It is also used to set up any input masks that you would like to use throughout the entirety of a trial. To add a weight object to your experiment, simply take the weight object and drag it and drop it into your experiment wherever you'd like. By default, it is called weight 1. Go ahead and double click on it to take a look at its properties. The first tab that you see is the duration input tab. This allows you to set how long the wait's going to happen, whether or not data logging is going to be set for this wait object. The timing mode can be changed to either event, cumulative, or custom. And is this wait object going to give up part of its processing in the background to preload another object? Generally speaking, for wait objects, we do recommend keeping pre release as same as duration. Now the input mask property allows you to set whether or not participants can respond during this wait period in their trial. You can click add to add an input mask, which is going to allow participants to respond either through the keyboard, the mouse, or the button, or any other device that you set. Once you've added an input mask, you can see that the properties now become available for that. You can set the allowable, so through which keys are participants responding. Is there a correct answer associated with that response? and the time limit, so how long do participants have to respond to this object. And the end action, so what happens once participants do make a response? Is the object terminating and moving on to the next object in the experimental timeline? Is it jumping to somewhere else in the experiment, or is nothing happening? And the jump label allows you to set where you're actually jumping to in the experiment if you so choose. The comment tab lets you choose the name, if there's a tag associated with this object, and if there are any notes associated with this as well. The script generation underneath here allows you to set whether this object is being loaded at the top of procedure or before object run, but we recommend keeping this at inherent. And handles conditional exit property allows you to say whether or not participants can opt out of the experiment by pressing the conditional exit key sequence in the middle of this wait object. The task events property allows you to time lock different tasks that you would like to complete during different events in this wait object. So if I click add, I can pick whenever I would like an event to happen. So I could click on the onset time of this object. And then I can have E prime then perform a function at the object onset time. So something through script that I may have written, sending a signal through Kronos, parallel port, serial port, or a socket device. The sync tab is currently set to none because the weight object has no visual component, so there's currently nothing for it to sync to, but you can opt to sync it with a vertical blank and sync the offset with a vertical blank as well if you so choose. The logging tab allows you to determine what data is being logged for this object. And the experiment advisor tab allows you to collect experiment advisor related statistics on this object. So it's onset to onset time values, it's onset delay, and any load time statistics that you might have. Thank you so much for watching this video. This concludes all the properties for the weight object.